look who is here. They're not clapping for me and Ryan. They're clapping because we are joined by Kentucky quarterback Will Levis. I would argue one of the – Ryan, is he – is he one of the most famous people in college football now in this offseason? Oh, there is no doubt. He's everywhere, man. He's golfing with Tim Couch. He's hanging out with Tom Brady. He's By going way, how, overseas. T- Will, how huge is Tim Couch? He's ginormous. <laughs> it, was, it was very, very surprising. He made you look small. Oh, yesterday. I know, yeah. That was a mistake posing with him because you <laughs> people don't know. You are big. You're cut, but you look like a child next to him. He's <laughs> massive. I know. Yeah. Um, Maybe after my playing career is over, I'll try to get to get back at him. So we'll see. <laughs> Who's better yeah. golfer? He is right now for sure. He's actually pretty dang good. He, he was telling me how after he stopped playing, he went like two years of taking lessons. And I think he's probably down to like a five or six handicap. So. Have you gotten to spend much time with him? I mean, honestly, you know, you guys, I, I really like that picture because you guys are kind of, you know, he's probably the best quarterback that ever played here. You got a chance to kind of get in that conversation with him. Was it cool to play with him and yeah. get to know him? Yeah, I've, I've been able to meet him a few times and just really had a few brief conversations. That was the first time I kind of had some extensive time to just kind of talk his talk his ear out and just hear about any kind of suggestions he would have on how to approach this season because he's obviously been in the same position that I'm in right now. And uh, just an awesome dude, and he's been a great resource for me. This is probably – the most excitement, hype, whatever you want to use that I can remember going into a Kentucky preseason, honestly, maybe since Tim was here, to be quite frank. I mean, it's been that. People are so jacked about this year and the energy. I mean, I did a poll a few weeks back and was like, what are you more excited about, football and basketball? And the basketball team's going to be really good, too, and it was like 93% football. I mean, can you feel – that excitement around Lexington? I definitely can, and I, I've heard fans come up and kind of say the same thing to me, kind of how that shift is happening towards football. Obviously, we want as much support as possible for all of our sports, but for there to be more energy and just more love around the football program just gives us more motivation to just go out there and make you guys even more proud. The, uh, I mean, you've gotten so much attention, and I, I mean, I don't think – some people don't – I mean, I think you like the attention – and but what is it like to turn on the shows I'm sure you watched as a kid and see yourself on them and see people debating whether or not you should put mayonnaise in coffee like like how does it feel to have that much sort of attention well first I didn't think that that would be the reason for getting the attention <laughs> but uh no it's definitely cool but at the same time I got to just make sure I'm focusing on what matters but um it's cool the, the, come it, on it's cool yeah it's cool but I mean the media stuff can get a little too much sometimes. Does like, it? And, I mean, like, Slacks, our, our media relations person, is, is awesome with making sure that I'm just comfortable with the amount of stuff I'm doing on that end. Because, I mean, I uh, the biggest thing I've learned how to do throughout this whole process is just tell people no. And I think just, it's like, tough. with this attention, it's, it's it, I'm just a, such a nice guy, and it's hard for me to kind of just tell someone, like, hey, like, I got something fo- I got to focus on today. Like, I don't feel like taking an hour out of my day to go on your radio show or podcast or whatever. And sometimes I feel like... Tell people no yeah, is hard. Like it's, I mean, yeah. telling people no is really hard. And yeah. you and you, you last year were like un, almost, I mean, almost too nice in terms of doing everything. And I did wonder if you were going to be able to do that this year. And it's hard because I know you don't. You should say now because I know you don't want to say no to these people. 100%, but yeah. you really don't have a choice sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's just a matter of making sure that I am allotting is, is enough time that I need to for what actually matters and then really just making sure that all that extra time is just spent wisely and that I'm not over over kind of strung. And that starts tomorrow, what matters. No doubt. Right? Yeah. This, the practice, practice, official practice begins. Mark Stoops was at an event I was at Saturday, and he said, you remember last year I got up and said, this team is going to be really good. And he did. And he goes, I'm saying it again. And I might even be more excited. Do you feel the same way? 100%. Yeah, I know. We got all the pieces that, that it takes to, to be a great team and obviously a great coaching staff as well. We, if, as long as we just keep buying into Coach Stoops' philosophy and, and do what the coaches ask for us, um, we're destined for great things. But we just got to take it one day at a time. That's a good media answer. But I know you do better than media answers. I, yeah. How good are these guys? We're, we're dang good. I mean, especially on, on the offense, like I just – I feel, like, so comfortable at every position. There's not really, like, a single spot that I'm looking at and be like, oh, like, th- th- that guy, like, might not be as reliable as, as the next guy, but we just have depth all across the board at every single position. And it really, like, doesn't even matter who we have in. We know that we're still going to be able to operate and just 
put put good plays down the field. You're a guy who's really smart when it comes to reading defenses and, and understanding offense. You how good how big is it going to be to have a full healthy tight end room? It's going to be awesome. I, I know our fans love our tight ends, and our coaching staff does too. <laughs> and um, we're definitely going to get them more involved this year. And with having Keaton back from injury, and there's all the other experience that we have with with Bates and Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah not being there in the spring, and then finally kind of being uh, healthy for, towards the end of Those summer. Are two huge on. targets, Seriously. Isaiah and, and Keaton. Yeah, yeah. and it's just great, just like athletic dudes that can stick their nose in there and make the blocks too. And uh, that's all you can ask for at the tight end position. So that's why those guys get paid and have the careers they do in the, at the next level, and we're going to make sure we utilize them at this level as much as we can. I'm not going to let Ryan interfere when I ask this. Tell me about the receiver room. I mean, you got, besides Demarcus Harris, really nobody that's played a lot of time at Kentucky, but I know you're excited about what's there. Yeah, I know DeMarcus is uh, the the number one returning receiver with uh, only like a dozen catches, I think, but uh, that doesn't scare me at all. I think, for one, if you're talking about DeMarcus, like he's been so awesome this past offseason kind of realizing the position that he's in that like he has a chance to really make a huge impact, and I've, I've seen him just put his head down and just work his tail off, and he is a much better player now than he was last year and than he was the year before. So his development has been amazing to see, for one. And then we have some other guys that just haven't really had the opportunity to uh, take the steps needed to, to get the playing time that they, that they wanted. I mean, Chauncey's coming along. I love Lou. Uh, a lot of the other guys, Rasan Lewis, he's been take, taking strides. And then also, like I've been saying, like we got some dogs, like some young dudes that they're. We'll talk about one of recruiting. them so he smiles, Dane 100%. Key. No, Dane, Dane, Dane is ever since the third or fourth spring practice, like it was kind of apparent that this kid was going to be a com- competitor for the starting job. And he was, he, he left spring starting. So, I mean, I talked to him actually the other day. I was like, hey, did you like picture yourself in this situation when you first got here? Like pretty crazy, isn't it? Like. You don't gotta hide it anymore. Like you're you're gonna be starting for us, and and uh and he was like, yeah, man. Like I just had to come in here and work and work as hard as I can. But like to be honest, like didn't expect all of this. And I was like, did you know how good you were? And he's like, honestly not. And I was like, I think <laughs> I think he surprised himself with how yeah. good he actually was when he was able to get to like a place like Kentucky and get taught by these level of coaches and be pushed by. Other well, let players. me ask you the same question. Yeah. Did you expect when you came here? that you would have people saying this guy can be a top 10 NFL draft. I know that's what you hoped. Did you expect it? I did. I did. I think that just who I was as a player and, and f- at least physically what I was able to do on the field, all I had to do was put tape out there for pe- to kind of just turn heads. And uh, I was lucky I was able to give him the opportunity to do it at Kentucky. And uh, obviously couldn't have projected – how well the season would have gone, but I always know, knew that if I was just put the tape on field, then people would feel that way about me. You came here, I think, in large part because of Liam when he was here and like his system and, and all that. Now, and now, it's understandable, he had to take that gig. You all of a sudden have another offensive coordinator. How's that going? Am I correct also that you were part of that process? Yeah, that was the coolest part, thing for me is uh, I found out when Coach was leaving – as soon as Coach uh, Coach Stoops did, and we were, it was like some rumors flying around the internet, and I was standing there with Coach Stoops, and we were talking about it, and he just got the call from Sean McVay right in front of me, and he was like, <laughs> left, <laughs> left the room. We went back upstairs, talked it out with Coach Cohen for a couple hours, and then one of the things that Coach Stoops made it just right away apparent to me was that he wanted me to be a part of that process of finding a new coach, and he wanted to have my input on everything, so. For him to have that trust in me was awesome. And then when Coach Skangs came around for uh, for the opportunity, it was it was a no-brainer, just the way he was Well, let's talk about, about that. It. We yeah. don't have to go through the process. But I know that that happened late. Yes. Like kind of late in yeah. the process. And all of a sudden you hear this guy is coming. How excited were you once you kind of knew about it? I just knew, for one, just looking at his track record and even just going on his Wikipedia page and seeing the different teams he's coached for throughout the years and the quarterbacks that were on those teams that he was able to work with one-on-one that's what got me most excited about it. And then also what made me most excited was we weren't the, one of the priorities for Stoops is that we weren't going to be changing the offense too, too much. It wasn't yes. going to be a completely new system. So that was the biggest thing that I vouched for when we first started. I was like, listen, like I've had – this will be my f- sixth <laughs> offensive coordinator in my, co- in my college that's career. I'm telling you that it, the more turnover you have, the more change you have from one year to the next, it's just it's more on me. And I want to make sure that if I want to progress and this offense wants to progress the way we want it to, that it's not going to be too, too different than last year. So that was cool. I think what's been amazing to see is 
you were not here the year before. And, and Kentucky won a lot of games in the other system, and, and Eddie Grand's a really a good guy. But to see, I mean, this is a different world than what it was two years ago in terms of an offense. Are you surprised at how quickly everyone else has picked up on this? Yeah, no, I think, um, for one, it's – I would talk about like recruiting. Like it's tough to recruit kids in, in an offense that requires a lot of guys across the board um, to be good guys across the board to be successful like we have now. So for us to come off of that one year last year with throwing the ball around and, and being very balanced with under center, gun, run game, pass game, uh, that's a testament to how we were able to recruit again after that year. And that helps us get guys like Barry on and, and Jordan and Dane. And if how they, fast is Jordan? fastest kid in america i mean really what's the, what's the uh what's the super bad quote he's like he's the fastest kid alive he's chasing <laughs> he's chasing him down the street like no like that's what i always say like when i see him get the ball he's uh <laughs> he's pretty insane so how i mean i look at the schedule and i say i mean you it's not certain you win a ton of games but there's not one game on that schedule you look at like last year going to georgia that was gonna be a tough haul no, right. I on, on the road, agree. that yeah, was yeah. going to be a tough haul. You look at this schedule this year, you go, why not, right? Yeah. If it's going to happen, it's going to be this year, you know, like having Georgia at home especially. I mean, yes. we got to take care of business to, from everyone from Miami, Ohio to Georgia, though, but it's we got to take it one game at a time. And I think in the SEC you could very easily get caught up with looking past guys and, and getting surprised. And, uh, I mean, that happened to, a little bit last exactly. year. You had that Chattanooga game that was, exactly. what, you know, you got to be Mississippi careful. Mississippi State, like, I mean, we knew they were going to be a good team, but we didn't know that the, that we were going to put the performance on the field that we did, you know. So, I mean, you got to take everyone seriously, and you got to take it one game at a time. So, after that Iowa game, people, I think, started looking at your film. Well, first of all, you had a great pro day, but then they also started looking at your film from the Georgia game because they were scouting all those Georgia defenders, and people were like, wait a minute, who look at this yeah. kid. Did you just feel things changing during the off season in terms of like how the next level was looking at you? Yeah, it was a weird like progression, especially like right after the season. Um, I was like, I was not paying attention at all throughout the season to like what analysts were saying or scouts or whatever. Um, I, I based on like how I performed in my mind, I was like, there's no, there's no shot. I'm going to be able to declare and, and be yeah. drafted pretty high this year, you know. So. Um, when that process kind of started get to get going and I had more people reaching out to me and telling me, like, hey, we could see you in the top three rounds, we could see you in this, we could see you whatever, that's when I kind of had to take it a little more seriously. But at the end of the day, I just knew that, like, I had so much more development to happen at this level before I took that next step. I didn't want to jump into the next level before um, just getting better at this level before it gets even more serious, and that's what the decision came down to. But it was kind of cool seeing that kind of avalanche of just – like opinions that people had about me because that's when my the idea of me going to the next level kind of materialized which is cool you know you endeared yourself to the fan base when you hurtled the louisville guy and then you gave the l's down in the end zone i mean that's your legacy right now i think <laughs> besides you know putting mayonnaise in your I mean, look at that that's the first yeah. look at that clapping that's exactly right but i gotta be honest one of the most you won me over when you just came back from wherever you were, Paris, Rome, Austria, traveling around overseas, <laughs> and the minute you get back, you called your receiver and say, let's go, I want to throw some ball, let's go work out. And this was a Sunday. I mean, Dane was supposed to come over to my house to grill steaks that night, and he goes, I can't come, we'll just call practice. You yourself did it. That just tells me where your mind is and what you still got that fire that you want to get out there and make this year special. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just a matter of getting the little things done, getting the extra work done, and getting the chemistry down with the guys. Um Especially throughout camp, I'm going to be pushing them to making sure that we're getting in there, doing, getting in the extra film, and really treating ourselves as professionals. Because um, all that extra stuff is fun and all, but this is really the one time of year where we can just focus on ball, and that's why I'm. And really it doesn't matter if about. you don't win, right? Like I mean, if things don't go well, all this hype doesn't, you know, it doesn't amount to anything. You know what I mean? I think you know that, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm not focused on that. I'm just trying to obviously make sure it all does play out the way that it's supposed to be, but. At the end of the day, it's all just hype and you can't really pay attention to it.